Happy Wednesday, EXP family. My name is Alyssa Specht with EXP University, and you are watching Level Up. So we are here to level up our lives, level up our businesses together. And we have an amazing show for you today. We are talking to Kevin and Lisa Cahill. You, you guys might know them before they've been on recently, and they're back. And today we're talking about your business is your database. So let's go and toss this over to Kevin and Lisa. Hello, EXP Realty family. Welcome to Level Up. We are so glad to have you with us. Today, we will be discussing your business is your database. My name is Kevin Cahill. And I'm Lisa Cahill. And today we're going to share with you one simple mindset shift to help you quickly increase your income and build a real business as a real estate professional. Allow us to introduce ourselves. Again, I'm Kevin Cahill, and I'm a licensed broker with EXP in Florida and Washington states. I've been a real estate broker since 1999. I spent years as an owner investor and managing broker with Keller Williams Realty. Then I was an executive with Realty, where I served as managing broker of multiple corporately owned Caldwell Banker offices. I've recruited hundreds of real estate agents over the years and have coached thousands of agents to higher levels of productivity and profitability. My wife, Lisa, is a licensed CPA, a certified public accountant, and has been since 1993. She spent decades advising corporations, small businesses, and high net worth individuals and families on their tax matters, representing them before the Internal Revenue Service. She is a noted expert on tax and business efficiency. She has been interviewed and quoted in the print edition of the Wall Street Journal three different times over the years, commenting on tax and real estate matters. In 2012, Lisa got a Florida real estate license and joined me in the residential real estate industry. Shortly thereafter, we created our own real estate brokerage brand and grew that company to multiple offices across Florida and Washington. In March and April of 2023, we folded our entire operations into eXp Realty. A few years ago, we created a technology software company called Realty Funnels, which provides easy to use and affordable business database solutions to real estate agents and teams and that helps them improve their client attraction lead magnets, their funnels, their website, uh, their prospects and client databases, their nurture and conversion automations and follow-up systems, saving agents thousands of dollars each month while helping them earn more and keep more money. So when we're talking about your business is your database, we bring a lot of real life experience to you today. So let's jump in. Your business is your database. And the real question for you is, do you own a business or do you merely have a job? Are you building an asset that you can sell? And if you are, what is the asset that you would sell? Now, Lisa, as a CPA, you've advised small business owners, medical practices on building their businesses in a real tax efficient way, but also with succession planning in mind of course. and a lot of other considerations that are very smart for business owners to take into their mind. Tell me and tell everybody here, what would you say is the number one asset that a service business has? Yes, it is their book of business. Their customers, patients, referral business, the system that they use to service their clients, their staff, their goodwill, all these things are the most important part of their business aside from the actual real estate. So of course, many businesses own real estate. We've had real estate when we've owned real estate brokerages, and yet the real estate can easily be separated out and valued. Mm -hmm. And then the question remains, what is the value of the ongoing business? And really, it is that database system for client retention and service fulfillment. So let's continue on and talk about that in a little bit more detail. So in a service business, 
Your database is your lead generation funnels. You know, how you're attracting clients, how you're attracting your ideal clients, the people who you absolutely want to work with to help them sell their home and buy their next home. You're also dealing with client journey pipelines. You know, how they come into your world and how they leave your world as a satisfied customer. That whole journey, that can be a pipeline, that can be an entire system that has triggers and automations and workflows that helps ensure that your clients are having a great experience every step of the way. Also, your database would include conversion processes. You know, not everybody who raises their hand, calls you, emails you, shoots you a text, is ready to buy or sell a home today or this week. So really, you have conversion processes for getting those people who raise their hand now, who are ready now to service them now, but then you're also needing to nurture other people so that when they are ready, they're working with you. You need to have systems in place so that you can nurture those people effectively and take them off the table so that no one else has an opportunity to be their agent. You need to be their agent. And then, of course, your database system is going to be the place in which you have checklists and making certain that everything is happening right, processes for fulfillment, making certain that everything happens correctly when you list a property, put it in the MLS, photographs, negotiating, getting all the way to the closing table, making certain the utilities are transferred effectively without interruption. All those systems for fulfillment should be inside your database. And then really the question for business valuation is how good are you at retaining your business from past clients, from sphere of influence? How good are you at that? And Lisa, you had a wonderful story about a gentleman whose business was as a real estate agent. He helped people who were exiting the business exit with dignity by creating a, a whole way they could earn out into their retirement. So let's talk about that for a quick minute. It was a gentleman and that's how he grew his real estate agent or his real estate business. He was on the lookout for agents that were wanting to transition out of the business, but he wanted a business. He wasn't going to spend a lot of time on a business that wasn't mostly past clients and sphere and referrals. He he was looking for real estate agents that had at least 75, 80% of their business came from referrals and past clients. Well, that is a real book of business. Right. And that's worth something. And he would only spend his time with them. And he told a story about how he met with a real estate agent that was busy, did a great bit of business. And then when he actually talked to them, he, he asked how much of your business is from past clients and referrals. And he said only 5%. And he said, forget it. You just don't have anything here for me to take over. You know, so today we're talking to you, the real estate agent who is looking to grow your business, earn more money, keep more money, whether you're a brand new agent, icon agent, mega team leader, whatever stage of the business you're in, this is really mission critical. Are you building systems so that your retention is somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 80% past clients and sphere of influence? If not, I, as an executive with Keller Williams Realty, Coldwell Banker, you know, when we were looking at mergers and acquisitions, we were looking at what of your business can no other agent possibly get because that's the business worth buying from you. And if you're looking to move from your current area, God forbid anything ever should happen to you that you couldn't work with home sellers or home buyers anymore. If you have systems in place that are built to retain your past clients, then another agent could step in and work with you to service your ongoing business. And then you could earn a, a referral fee. You could earn what we call an earn out as you're exiting the industry, but it all has to do with the systems you have in place to grow your business and to service your existing business. 
and I'm looking for, and that gentleman was looking for mm -hmm. a high percentage of your business coming from past clients in your sphere of influence. Otherwise, your business is you pay a third party lead provider in exchange for business. Anybody can buy that business from the third party service provider. They don't need to buy it from you. So let's talk more about how you shape this business database effectively. And that's expensive oh, too. Yeah. And what I like about this list that we have here is that it breaks everything down. So when you're setting your goals and you're writing everything down, which is really important to have your written goals. And then when you go through about how many contacts you need and how many of every aspect of this list that you need, then you're able to identify any areas that you can improve on. And what else I love about what Kevin was saying, if you were to move, then you've got your system and you know exactly what you need to do if you were to find yourself in a different market area or if you want to expand in a different market area. It's the same steps that you've perfected. Yeah, these systems work in any market. They work in any market condition. They work in any geographic area. This is the exact way that you can build a six figure month business a million dollar a year GCI business. And we have helped real estate agents move to brand new market areas and very quickly ramp up their business as though they were the number one agent in town. So let's keep going. So the question is, are you building a real business? One that is reliable, efficient, attractive, and lucrative. That's a real business. That's a business that has value. That's not just a job. It's not such that when you take your last listing or work with your last buyer, you're done making money in real estate. This is a real business. So your top priorities as a realtor, more so than just opening doors or writing contracts. I learned this back in 2003 and this has been something that has guided everything about how I've grown my business. And I've been in databases since 1999. I've been working on my database and growing my database system since 1999. But I heard this statement in 2003 and it changed everything. Your success in real estate is in direct proportion to the number of people who, when they think of real estate, they think of you. And so the question is, are you doing that? Are you thinking of it in that kind of way? Your job is to really just grow your database, add more people to your database every day. And it's not just that you add people to your database, you're growing relationships with those people in your database. And as you grow those relationships with the people in your database, you're looking to increase the number of raving fans that you have, who when they think of real estate, they think of you. When they hear anybody talking about real estate, they say, hold on a second, let me pick up the phone. I know Kevin and Lisa will answer. They're sending you business. Why don't you tell everyone about Martha and Tommy? We met a couple at an estate sale and they handle a lot of estate sales in our area. And with our unique value proposition that we had, they really loved that unique value proposition. And we really kind of clicked with them. So over the years, they were, are in a position where they are in front of a lot of people that are selling their properties and they have sent us hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of business over the years. It's just been incredible. So it's not only just a person that's going to buy and sell every five to seven years. It's about someone that is in a position of influence where they are in front of a lot of people that would have a need to sell or buy real estate. And it was and, interesting with Martha and Tommy, you know, they ran estate sales. Oh yeah. They, so they were connected to estate attorneys. They were dealing with the bereaved, the family members who had inherited a property or they were needing to dispose of the real estate mm -hmm. asset. And so they were in a unique position mm -hmm. to guide a lot of people to us. Yeah. And they liked us. They trusted us. They knew they had worked with other real estate agents that they were not impressed with. And so once we met them and we had a couple of transactions that we helped with, 
they they were just sold. They they recommend us constantly. Hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I'm sorry, over the years, over the years. of of GCI from one of our many raving fan relationships that we yes, have. Yes, and we don't pay a dime for it. No, we just thank them. And they, we, you they know. payment to them is that their customers are well taken care of. That's all they want. They want to make certain that the people that they care about are being cared about. And so that's what your job is. It's your, really your number one priority to grow your database so that you have enough people in your database that you're going to be able to statistically have enough transactions coming from your database every year for you to hit your financial goals. Mission critical to that is that you have a number of raving fans who are uniquely positioned to really drive traffic to you. So we have CPAs, financial advisors, estate sales, contractors, and all just, of these people. And not just builders, you know, who are building a new home, but just general contractor types who are talking to people who are thinking about selling and they pick up the phone right there at the kitchen counter and we're talking with the home seller because our friend who does tile work was able to get that conversation started for us. So this is really your job, is to grow that list of people in your database and grow that inner circle of raving fans. Now, one of my favorite quotes of all time, Zig Ziglar, he said, you can get everything you want out of life if only you're willing to help enough other people get what they want out of life. And really the question is, are you willing because it says right there, if only you are willing. So the question is, are you willing to help enough other people? You can't just help two or three people. You have to help enough other people get what they want out of life. And so your job is to meet people and make appointments. And as I mentioned, not everybody that you meet is going to immediately have a real estate need. They may not immediately think of somebody who has a real estate need. The money is lost in that nurture period between meeting people and making appointments. Sure, it's easy if you know somebody raises their hand and they want you to come over and help them with their real estate matter. You're not going to lose any money there. You're just going to meet people and make appointments. But there is millions of dollars a year of GCI sitting in your database if only you worked it correctly because the money is lost in that nurture period. This is the top agent business process. This is really the funnel, the flow in which a real estate agent works. If they're earning six figures a month, if they're having a $1 million a year GCI business, this is the funnel, this is the flow of how their business works. They invite people, you invite people to do business with you. You grow your database. You convert those immediate needs. You gotta win them, you gotta take them off the table immediately. And you have to nurture those people who are not immediate needs, but they're future opportunities. So you can't let those slip through the cracks. I can't tell you how many times as a managing broker, I've had agents come into my office and say, oh, I'm so upset. My neighbor three doors down just listed with somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, that's where they didn't do a good job nurturing that future opportunity. Well, that goes back to writing your goals down. Mm -hmm. and knowing how you're going to go about it and then talking to people and letting people know what you do for a living, inviting people to do business with you. That's very important. A lot of people will not ask people to do business with them. You need to invite them into business with you as though it's one of the smartest things they could possibly do because really it should be. And you want to just be working constantly to increase the number of people who think of you when it comes to their real estate matters and inviting people to do business with you. One of the easiest ways is to offer them value. One of the things I often say to people is, hey, if ever I can be a resource to you, just let me know. Happy to answer any real estate questions you have. No cost, no obligation, no pressure. I'm just happy to be a resource to you. And that makes a ton of money every year. Just that one simple phrase. And it's really just, it comes from your heart. I am happy to be a resource to you. Now you grow your business, you convert those immediate needs, you nurture for the future opportunities, and then you make appointments. 
and you deliver concierge level service to your clients. And concierge level service is mission critical. You can't give anyone a, a subpar experience. You need to give them top-notch experiences so that they want to have their friends and their family and their people that they know from work, people they know from church. They want those people to have that great experience as well. All too often, people are talking about the terrible experience they're having with their real estate situation. And you could be solving all those problems if only you're getting enough other people raving about you. And this is what it really looks like. This is the funnel. This is how things work. And of course, if you're an icon agent, you know, you've got these notions. But the question I have is, are you systematized about it? Are you making this such that you have ways in which you can improve every step of the way? So you start with the top of the funnel, you're attracting people, you're inviting people to do business with you. And we're all about getting people to chase us. We don't chase our ideal clients, our ideal clients chase us. And they do so because we put out lead magnets, we put out valuable offers, we say to them that we're happy to be a resource to them. We want to get people to raise their hand, call us, email us, text us, so that they're easily reaching out to us when the time is right. But our job with our whole system is that we're staying top of mind for them. And we're working to attract sellers because those are the most efficient part of the business. So that's where we focus our energy on attracting sellers. So you know that you could be working with 20 or 30 active sellers at any given moment you couldn't possibly be working with 20 or 30 active buyers at the same time. At best, you could work with two sellers or two buyers a day, but you couldn't really be working with 10 buyers on the same day or 20 buyers on the same day. But, right. but you know, we've had it where we have 20 to 30 active listings and pendings at the same time. And the agents that we coach and the agents who have been in our brokerages, they have been able to create these six figure months because they craft a seller focused business. Now the buyers show up and we're happy to service the buyers and many of our sellers are buyers and that's fine. Many of the buyers will sell. Of course, that's fine too, but our focus is to draw, to draw as many of the sellers as we can to working with us. Now you have those lead magnets, your funnels, your websites, the marketing that you do, some of the free marketing that you might do on social media, some of the paid marketing that you might do in print media, bus benches, you know, billboards in your area. We have agents that we've coached who have radio programs, many different ways in which you can get those people into the top of your funnel. Then you focus on converting, nurturing the relationship. And you do that with pipelines and automation workflows so that no one is falling through the crack. We have a great story. We were on a podcast one time with a business person. She was really successful and her podcast was about business. So we started talking about real estate. And one of the most important things in your business that you can have as far as information is feedback. And feedback is really a little bit hard to get. So here's some feedback that she gave us that I think you're going to really find useful. She had recently moved to Florida where we are and she was looking for a house to buy. So she looked at a lot of open houses, met a lot of real estate agents. One agent she ended up doing business with and it was because he had put her on a drip campaign and he sent her an email about hurricane preparedness and that impressed her and it was some information that was really useful to her she didn't know anything about hurricane preparedness not being from florida and she said you know i felt like he really cared and people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care so that's a great story. That is what your nurture needs to be like. That's what it needs to look like. It's not about you. It's about them. 
You know, what's interesting is we know April met many real estate agents. Oh, tons of them. Most didn't put her on a drip campaign. This gentleman earned her business by putting her on a drip campaign mm -hmm. and sending resources of value to her. That really nurtured the relationship. And it was what won him the business, but it also won her as a raving fan. Yes. Yeah, so she's telling other people and she's a person of influence. So that is exactly how it's done mechanically. Now, of course, if you're a top level agent, icon agent, mega team leader, a lot of this is something you already understand. And yet again, I would just really challenge you. Are you systematizing it? Are you making it such that it is easily able to be tracked and measured so that you can easily improve on those areas where you're perhaps falling a little short. None of us bat a thousand. None of us are hitting it out of the park. None of us are always getting five star ratings and reviews. And yet if you have systems, then you can find ways that you can improve. And really there are tens of thousands of dollars of GCI to be earned in those small little improvements. One little improvement can make a massive difference to your business over the long haul. Now, you attract, you convert, and then here it is at the bottom of the funnel, you're efficiently executing. Now, Lisa is an efficiency expert as a CPA. She guides businesses on tax efficiency. And for you as a real estate agent, and especially if you're a mega agent, because we've talked to tons of mega agents who complain about the inefficiencies of what they're doing and how many, how many opportunities are falling through the cracks. It's not enough that you close a deal. It's not enough that you got that buyer in your car. It's a question of, you know, are you getting them under contract quickly? Are they getting the right house if they're a buyer? If they're a seller, are they getting top dollar quickly for their home? It's not enough that you got that listing. You can't be working until month five, day 29 on that six month listing agreement before you get it under contract. You will die a slow death in this business if you do not focus on increasing and improving your efficiency. It's all about closing more transactions in less time. Now, what does that really look like? For many agents, their success rises and falls on their systems. And for far too many agents, they're hitting a ceiling with their systems. They're just not able to achieve more because they don't have the right systems in place. Here's what it looks like, and this is coming from talking to thousands of real estate agents over the years about their business and about their systems. Mega agents, teams, and icon agents all too often have too many systems. They're way too expensive. The myriad systems don't talk together nicely. They don't work together efficiently. They don't play together nicely. You need your systems to work seamlessly. And they often complain about having complicated systems, poor support, poor technical support. They can't figure out how to do all this stuff. They can't get anybody on the phone. They're just sort of tired of that system because it was too complicated and clunky. Now, newer agents and underperforming agents overwhelmingly either have no systems or inferior systems. And they're making a lack of commitment. They're, they're, they're demonstrating a lack of commitment to systems. I was talking with an underperforming agent earlier this week, and he was sort of feeling like, I just don't know what to do. And he was talking about this strategy, another strategy, a third strategy, a fourth strategy, a fifth strategy. And I asked him, what, what database are you using? What systems are you using to keep in touch with these people? And he mentioned a, a name that we all might recognize. And I said, great, how much time are you spending inside of that system? And he says, I'm oh, probably three or four hours a month. I'm like, you're not committed to that system. The system is your business. It's sort of like saying I have a, a, a local restaurant and I go there three to four hours a, a month. You know, that's, you're not going to have success if your systems are something you only touch upon or visit three or four hours a month. They need to be a very efficient part of your business that you're touching on every day and that are that is delivering a return on investment for your time, energy, expense, for your ad spend, for your organic efforts. You need to have a system that you can commit to that is really going to be driving results to you. 
really creating the right systems in your business is mission critical. And, and that's one of the things we are most focused on doing is helping agents put the right systems in place. Now, here's the thing. The challenge is whether you have the right systems to get you to the next level, to attract more opportunities, to stay in front of people and, and, and become top of mind. Your systems need to free you up and help you not have to do those repetitive tasks over and over and over again. And you need to be able to nurture more future clients efficiently and service those clients that you have right now at a high level. It's all about systems. Now, in particular, you can systematize everything that you do repeatedly. Now, if you break your business down, you have soft skills like negotiating, pricing a home correctly, helping a home seller understand what the price should be, getting them to agree to your marketing strategy, helping them when offers come in to accept the right offer, dealing with uh, negotiation over home inspections. Those are all soft skills. Now, the hard skills are the repeated tasks that you do over and over and over again, the exact same way. Communications, checklists, anything that you do repeatedly, you need to have a system that, that can do all those things for you. Send out the emails reminding a home seller to get their utilities transferred over without interruption a few days before closing. Emails so that they understand what's happening with the closing. Emails so that they know uh, how to reach out to you and your closing team, however your business might be. You don't need to keep rewriting those same emails. Just set it once and forget it. You automate the hard skill tasks and you're going to be able to very quickly grow your business. This is a powerful opportunity. You're doing the work anyway. You might as well build a real asset. You want to build a database platform to attract your ideal clients, use systems to capture and convert those current opportunities, pipelines to service those now clients, use workflows to nurture the future clients, automations to efficiently execute and close more transactions. You have to systematize everything you do. You can't be constantly rebuilding your website, uh, trying to figure out what lead magnet will work this week. You need to have pipelines that take your clients through the entire journey of, in a way that they love and rave about. Workflow so that your communications are going out on an automatic basis. Your follow-up for leads are coming in and going out automatically. And your tasks, contract to close, all that follow-up is automated. We have a, a story recently. We had a seller and the buyer's agent was doing her walkthrough. She called us up and informed us that all the utilities were turned off. Well, the truth of the matter was she never told her buyer clients to turn the utilities on. And that should have been an email automation that should have been done. So she ended up, you know, how how impressed are these people going to be with her and are they going to ever want to use her again? Probably not. That is an easy, smooth part of the transaction that should have been no problem. And she did not have that piece of it done. So therefore, she did not impress these people at all. It's, it's sad how often we see things falling through the cracks simply because systems aren't in place to prevent things from falling through the cracks. We have so many other resources. We're delighted to share this with you today during our Level Up session with you. We're here to help you in any way that we can. We would invite you to visit kevincahill.org to learn more. You can watch more of our videos at youtube.kevincahill.org. We're so thankful for this opportunity to spend some time with you. We look forward to seeing you again in future EXP University sessions. Thank you so much for being here. We wish you a great day. Thank you and goodbye until next time.